guys welcome back to another gun wall review today we have one of my favorite guns um, this is a surplus gun and it is the Polish P64 Makarov as you can see gun is clear mag is empty and on safe so First, I'm going to tell you off, um, I like this gun, and uh, it's cheap. You can get these guns on uh, Classic Firearms, I think might be out of stock. I think I got this one from Aim Surplus. I paid $1.99 out the door, and of course the FFL transfer when I got to the pawn shop. I picked it up at. Anyway, so when you buy these Army Surplus pistols like this, um, on aim surplus specifically you can actually select the quality of the gun that you're going to get and of course you pay a little bit more for the better quality well I usually do my regular refinishing on these guns so I went ahead and opted for the cheapest one uh, looking for a little bit of a project and all the guns do come functional uh, and tested however you might have some pitting or or some surface rust or doubloon may be worn something like that uh, anyway so these are about $200. So first I'm going to go in a little bit on the history of these guns, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, after the end of World War II, uh, during the Cold War, uh, Soviet Russia wanted to standardize a cartridge for uh, all the Eastern Bloc countries. Previously, during World War II, they had the Tokarov, which was a 1911 clone. And those were using a 762 by 25 which is basically a light carbine cartridge. If you ever want a, uh, a good, powerful, almost semi-army piercing uh, cartridge, look into that gun. A lot of people talk about the FN57, but that uh, 762 by 25 highly underrated. And you can get those guns for about $200 also. Anyway, back to this one. So when Russia was pressuring the Eastern Bloc countries to standardize around um, they wanted to move towards their 9 millimeter Luger kind of uh, like Germany had so what they came up with is this 9 by 18 Makarov and basically what this is it has about the same diameter I believe it's a little smaller than 9 millimeter uh, but it's still a 9 millimeter and it's a millimeter shorter of a case um, so basically what you get is almost the exact same ballistics as 9mm. I think 9mm is loaded a little hotter. Um, not by much. Um, anyways, good little bullet. Uh, however, uh, these can be kind of expensive and hard to find. Uh, I think, as you can see here, I bought a cheap box. And this is considered a cheap box <laughs> of uh, Red Army at a local gun store. 2366 for 50 cartridges um, not cheap but I mean there's worse out there now they do make the uh, self-defense cartridges for these um, you get all the fancy polymer tips and all that stuff and all the bells and whistles anyways so when they standardized this round and this is what they wanted all the Eastern Bloc countries to use uh, Russia of course came out with their Makarov pistol um, Poland, they Poland, uh, they wanted Poland to kind of standardize with them. Poland said they were standardizing the round, but they wanted to come up with their own pistol. So, and this is kind of a hazy part in history um, for this pistol. Um, many people speculate that uh, when Poland wanted to design this pistol, they. Mm, copied uh, is probably a <laughs> light term they copied the Walter PPK and uh, if you know anything about Walter PPKs and you look for how this gun is designed you can see it this gun is literally a PPK clone chambered in 9x18 Makarov uh, now does that make it a bad gun no the PPK is a great gun uh, in fact 
I love this gun so much. The only thing that's bad about this gun I don't like is magazine capacity. Um, and how the mag release is. Mag release is down here. It's a little funky. Pops out. And you got a 6 plus 1 capacity. Uh, not fantastic. But it's, it's, you know, it was doable. Anyway, so these became standard in Poland. Used by military. Uh, mainly used by their police force uh, for these guns. And the police actually like these a lot. And a lot of police officers still use these in service today. Uh, now, the grips. If I remember right, also reading. These grips are actually not original grips. I remember reading uh, that some of these guns were set with these thick, bulky, plastic grips. Because if they didn't put the grips on it. Uh, it would be classified as a Saturday Night Special and uh, would not be able to be imported into the country. Now, if you look at this gun, it is extremely, extremely thin. So, this is the gun I'm planning on using to carry um, because of its lightness and its size. Now, recoil is a little harsh on this gun can, just because of its weight. However, it is a full metal frame gun, so it's not so bad. Um, Two hands, not a problem. One hand, not a problem. It does hit a little hard on the web um, when you're shooting one hand, but that's to be expected. Now, one of the things that I love about this gun, if you look at it, it's got a nice, good grip pattern right here on the slide. And then the sights. It's got a fixed rear, rear um, dovetail sight. You can drift side to side if you need to. And then it's got this nice anti-glare checkering. All the way on top of the slide up to the blade and a fixed blade on it so these guns are known to be accurate also for one other reason that I'm about to show you now another thing I love about this gun is the takedown super easy on this gun one of the easiest out of all the pistols I know you pull down the trigger guard and lock it right down the frame oh, let me set the safety off pull back lift up slide forward and that's it you're disassembled for clean. I talk about the slide for a second. You can see here on this one here, it's got a serial number. It's got its importation marks, 1971 dated. The 11, I'm not sure what the 11 is for. And on the back, 9 millimeter P64. Real basic slide, but you know that's a good design. It's it's a good looking gun. Once again, guys, I have no idea what that sound is. Um, there's a apartment next to me getting remodeled, and they're drilling holes in the wall, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, back to the gun. The other reason these guns are known for being really accurate is the barrel. It is a fixed barrel design on these guns. Which, of course, is accuracy. Now, if you can see... This one here does have some pretty good rifling on it, and I've shot this gun quite a bit, and it is, it is accurate. Um, my pistol shot, I'm not a huge pistol fan, um, I'll put that out there now. I don't like pistols a whole, whole lot, I'm more of a long gun kind of guy. Um, so my shot's not too bad on this, um, I did take it to range, there's some footage of that, and uh, you'll see at, I don't know, 15 yards. I'm still able to hit, you know, into the uh, boiler room size target. Uh, Reassembly, just as easy as disassembly. Put it back on. You gotta kind of level it just right. The barrel goes in just like that. Okay. Got that back in there. And there you go. Now, there's something else that's good about this gun that's neat, is uh, it does have an exposed hammer that you can cock, and leave cocked, and decock. Uh, it also does, when you do the safety on it, the safety will go on it, but it also has a safety decock that will release the hammer. Um, now. It does have a round indicator. If you see right here on the back of the slide, there's a little indention with a little dot. When there's a round of the chamber, this dot will sit out just a little bit past. 
Um, so that's a neat little feature on it. Now, there's one more cool thing about this gun, and this is uh, for a gun this size. It is double action. That look at that. Now, um, the original trigger spring that comes on these guns is notorious for being heavy. Um, I want to say they're like 16 pounds or something like that. They're ridiculous. Um, but there are trigger kits, uh, trigger spring kits you can get. And I actually installed one of in this, which reduces the trigger a lot more. Uh, I don't have any Snapcats, but I am going to trigger uh, dry fire this for you. So, set in single action. You got a little bit of a, of a take up right there. And then roll light. So it's probably like a four pound trigger now. Um, double action, considerably heavier. Double action is probably still like 10 or something like that. Not horrible, but not bad. Now, what I would recommend for this gun is uh, it is good for people with smaller hands. I have small hands. This is a small gun. Uh, it actually fits me pretty nice. Um, so. Let's look at what you normally get when you get this gun. Most of the importers uh, in the uh, surplus firearms dealers, when you buy it, will have this original sheath that comes with it. Um, these are not numbered that I've seen anywhere on them, so it doesn't really matter which gun it comes with. But you normally get this sheath. You only get the one magazine. It does come with the extra magazine um, sleeve. And then you also get a little tool. And this little tool is for helping if you want to disassemble the gun even further. You can take off the grips. And um, I'm not entirely sure what that is for. I assume that it has something to do with the removing of the firing pin out of the, uh, the top. When I did it, I, I tore it apart when I refinished it. I just used some punches and a screwdriver. I don't think I had any time to get it apart. Anyway, so that's basically what you get in it. It is a um, it is a real leather, and it's like tan. It's got this kind of generic. It's like every leather sheath that came out of Eastern Europe <laughs> in the uh, 70s or 80s. Um, I am sorry, guys. I want to apologize for all the background noise. I don't know. Anyways, so this gun does shoot really well. Uh, like I said, you can single hand this gun without any problems. Um, some guns this size, the 9mm, they're just too light. That's why I like a good heavy metal frame gun. Now, um, like I mentioned earlier, I want to use this one for my concealed carry because of its size. You can put this gun in any pocket. And uh, unless you're wearing skinny jeans, no one's gonna know that you have this gun on you. Cause it's just that small. I mean, literally, let me see if I, here, here's a flask. I mean, it, if that's the size for comparison right there, it's a, you know, it's, it's small. Um, it is a little on the heavy side. I think it weighs like two or three pounds. Not, that's not too bad. Um, I would say that if you're going to use it concealed carry and you live in any kind of hot climates, um, look into a coating of some kind. Uh, I just kind of cold blew this, polished up, cold blew it. That's why it's got kind of that shiny look on it. Uh, I would probably parkerize it once I go to actually use it as concealed carry. Um, simply just keep it from rusting because it is. We live in South Texas and it gets hot here and you're going to sweat on your gun. That's why a lot of people like Glocks down here. Um, because of the composite. Anyways, um, overall, it's a nice gun. Super easy to work on. Um, super easy to shoot. Super cheap. Ammo in capacity is a little bit left to be desired, but overall, it's a nice little package if you're wanting just a small uh, little shooter. Um, it'd be great for your wife or girlfriend to learn shooting on because it's a light recoil. It's still small. Uh, it's a great gun. I'll post the links to this uh, to both aim surplus and classic firearms whether they have them in stock or not I will post 
and you can kind of take a look at them see how it is I got some shooting footage I'm gonna post on this here showing where I bring in the uh, where I kind of grouped it and uh, you'll get to see some of that and this this gun it will be in other videos because um, I carry this gun with me anywhere I go when I go hunting this is always my sidearm so you're gonna see it here and there it's not it's gonna be one of those guns where you see it so anyways tell me what y'all think of it if you have got one uh, comment down below what you think about it I want to hear I want to see if I'm the only one that loves these things because I tell you what I do love this gun um, and it's my favorite pistol I've ever owned and I haven't owned a whole lot of them but this is my favorite so far anyways so y'all comment down the bottom if you got one what you think of it and uh, if you have any chip also I had something um, I was thinking about Tell me if you've ever heard of anyone chambering these in uh, 9x19. Um, I know it's something I, I, I just kind of thought about. I know it's a tight stretch to, to put one in here um, in these mags. Uh, but I do know I've had some 9x19 light self-defense rounds when I had my topo rod that was chambered in, in 9x19. Um, they were 85 grains and they were the exact same overall length as these so if you know anyone who's ever rechambered one of these in 9x19 comment in the bottom let me know kind of curious to see how that worked out anyways y'all have a good one i'll see y'all next time Be sure to come over here and subscribe. And of course you have to hit the little bell. Otherwise we want to show up in your notifications each time we post a new video. And check us out on Facebook and give us a like. We post all of our content there as well. As long as some pictures that we take. Speaking of Instagram, you can check us out on Instagram too. We post all of our pictures, some short clips that don't end up on YouTube. Along with a little bit of funny stuff, some game recipes, and we're also on Twitter. You can check us out on there, some of our posts. We keep everyone kind of uh, in the queue along what we're on to, and what we're up to, and what we're doing. Um, along with some other posts about some other things that we like. So be sure to check us out on Patreon. We could always use the support. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up, but that stuff kind of isn't cheap, so every little bit of support helps and will help us get out some good content for everyone to see.